So we're in the mission of Tarnit, and we're talking about fasting, but we are diverting off to a whole discussion about situations or pe people that don't fast, like the priests in the temple, or days when we don't fast. And right at the end of the second chapter, and these remarks, by the way, will close the second chapter. So the second chapter, if you like, begins with, you know, what we do on fast days and ends with days on which we don't fast. In the ninth mix, Mishnah, the Mishnah explains, Ein gozrin tanit ala tzibur bachamishi. We don't decree a fast on the community to begin on a Thursday. Why don't we want to begin on a Thursday? We don't want to inflate market prices. And it's an interesting question. The Mishnah doesn't make clear, by the way, why a fast on Thursday should inflate market prices. And one possibility is that people are going to eat a big meal Thursday night and then they're going to eat a big meal Friday night. So they're going to buy twice as much food at the end of the week and that's going to put pressure on suppliers. Or maybe it's because at the end of the week and um, suppliers haven't got the opportunity to bring in extra material, whereas if the fast were decreed on a Monday, then suppliers could kind of plan, you know, to sell for maybe Monday night's meal and then they could bring in more food for Shabbat. Maybe that's going on. Or maybe suddenly, maybe that if there's a sudden decree of a fast, maybe everyone says, oh, gosh. There's going to be a famine. I better stock up on food. So maybe maybe market prices are always going to rise when they decree the fast. But, and so we don't want to do it on a Thursday because the pricing is already under pressure for Shabbat. So we don't we don't entirely understand the Mishnah, but there some, it does seem to be some kind of concern about affecting market prices. And it's very interesting that the rabbis are anxious about market prices. This is not, you know, this is not something that they will let blindly go. So the Mishnah continues, Eila, shalosh taniyot harishonot shnei sheni v'chamishi v'sheni. So that when we decree the first three fasts, we actually declare them on a Monday, a Thursday, and a Monday. Remember, these are always going to be Mondays and Thursdays. So we're going to decree them on a Monday, a Thursday, and on a Monday. So people have plenty of time to prepare for Shabbat. And then I guess people are ready, or perhaps they're not. The Mishnah goes on. So afterwards, we can uh, uh, the second lot, we can actually start on a Thursday. It's as if once the first lot begun on a Monday, the rest can, can, can begin on Thursday. So the second lot begin Thursday, Monday, Thursday. And Rabbi Yossi is going to disagree. Rabbi Yossi, Omer, Kashem, She'en, Arishon, Not, B'chamishi, Kach, Lo, Shniot, Velo, Achranot. In other words, for Rabbi Yossi, they, the cycle always begins on a Monday. So for Rabbi Yossi, you'd fast on a Monday, a Thursday, and a Monday. You take the Thursday off. The following Monday, you can start the next cycle. Whereas for the main opinion, and the Malachah does not go, go according to Rabbi Yossi, by the way. Whereas the classic opinion in the Mishnah it would be, look, you start on a Monday, Thursday, Monday. And then on the following Thursday, you can start the next set of fasts so while this thing's going on you're going to be basically fasting on every monday and thursday until there is rain there are other days too when we're not going to declare a fast we're not going to decree a fast on rosh chodesh we're not going to declare one on hanukkah or on purim and of course, nowadays, the public fast days don't fall on those days. But remember, at a time of drought, it's possible that, you know, the drought can fall at this period. And the Mishnah continues. If they'd already begun, they don't stop. I, if they've already begun the cycle of Monday, Thursday, Monday, we don't interrupt the cycle. Divrei Rabban Gamliel, according to Rabban Gamliel. Rabbi Meir said, Am I Rabbi Meir? Rabbi Meir said, look, even though Rabban Gamliel says they don't interrupt, 
i.e. they carry on fasting. So Rabbi Gamliel is saying, look, you've set up fasts, Monday, Thursday, Monday, and so on, the cycle continues. If it's before Purim, you're going to carry on. If it's before Hanukkah, you're going to carry on. If it's over Rosh Chodesh, you're going to carry on. But Rabbi Meir says, okay, maybe we're going to fast on Rosh Chodesh. Maybe we're going to fast on Hanukkah. But he, Rabbi Gamliel would agree she'ain mashlimin, that we're not actually going to complete the fast. So you'd start off fasting in the morning, but you wouldn't fast a whole day. You'd fast kind of a part of the day. And according to Rabbi Meir, the same applies to the ninth of Av, should it fall on a Friday. You can kind of imagine that, you know, we, we don't, we certainly don't fast on Shabbat, but Shabbat is coming in, right? Are we going to fast right up to when the stars come out if Tisha B'Av falls on a Friday? I mean, it, the, the, it's not very, it, it's kind of impossible to imagine really, you know, I mean, we bring Shabbat in early anyway. It's kind of impossible to imagine actually fasting on the 9th of Av until the stars come out and then bring in Shabbat. And actually the way we resolve it now with our calculated calendar is that the ninth of Av never falls on Arab Shabbat, just as Yom Kippur never falls on Arab Shabbat. So we're never faced with this dilemma. But the Rambam actually explains in his commentary that the Halakha does not follow Rabbi Meir. So that if for some reason the new moon was seen at a time that the ninth of Av were decreed to fall on Friday, then yes, we would fast the whole of the Friday until the stars came out. And then when the stars came out, I guess we'd bring in Shabbat and um, and we'd start eating again. And that is the close of the second chapter. The third chapter then talks about situations where we might want to fast. And we've already talked about fasting when the rain doesn't fall. But there are many other disasters that could come upon the community. And one by one, the third chapter of this Mishnah is going to explore these situations. But it's going to begin with situations which are, which are rain related before we get into other areas. We're going to begin with rain related situations, but slightly more complex than just the rain not falling at the beginning of the winter. Say to Tanyot, Elu Amur, be be reveya rishona. This order of fast is enacted because of the first rain. This word reveya is a it's a it's a rare word, but it just seems to refer to the early rain in the autumn. So that's the, that's the order of fasting. If this autumn rain doesn't come, we fast for it. Aval, but. Smachim shishanu, if the crops have withered, have changed. So maybe we've had a little bit of rain at the beginning of the autumn and the crops have started sprouting. And then the rain stopped. So the crops start to dry up. And of course, this is even more serious than a late rain. If, if the rain is late, then the crops will grow, but they'll grow late. If they start growing and then there's a drought, then we lose the entire harvest. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to be cut off while they're growing. What do we do? We sound a blast for them immediately. And when the Mishnah says we sound a blast, really what it's saying is we jump straight in to the urgent fasts. The, the Remember the all day, remember the, the, the order of fasts begins just very gently. We don't blow the shofar. We don't even fast um, uh, during the, we don't fast during the night. It's just an all day fast and so on. If we get a change in the crops, if we get a drought in the middle of the growing season, we jump straight into to full fasting. We blow the shofar, we blow the trumpets. This is an emergency. Similarly, if the rain stops, if we get 40 days between different, but if we get 40 days of, of dry between different rainstorms, we immediately sound a blast. Because it's a, 
it's a it's a it's a well i've translated here as a plague of drought it's a it's a uh, it's a blow. It's a blow of drought. It's a it's a it's a blow that affects the community. A makai. It's it's a yeah. It's like a plague. Um, and then the Bartonur explains what, what what do we mean by sounding a blast immediately? We say on the first fast. Shekol chomer ha'amur batanyota achronot nohagim miyad barishonot. That all the stringency, in other words, all the extra things practiced on the later fasts are practiced immediately on the first fast, because this is a this situation is very grave and we can't just let it pass. <laughs> 